It just won't. It's it's too big. It can't. No, it, it's it, like it, I always just, tell people that like, for that to happen would literally require someone basically making like a, an incredible leap forwards in logistics of esports, like concept. They probably have to invent some like mechanism for how you would even set up a league like that. Like you basically you you just inventing you started from scratch inventing the wheel basically. Yeah, there's just not enough revenue there. Real legitimate revenue based on real legitimate costs they're spending. Like it's so, here's the thing. The here's idea the... might have worked in Overwatch franchise league, oh, you course. know, owned by the Blizzard, but not, not this big, bad. not this yeah. fucking big. It's just no. Too that's much. why I think the real irony is obviously the Overwatch League, with all its investment from outside of esports, has the sort of investment that if esports was legit in the way these reports claim, would all go into League of Legends. Like League of Legends has significantly better foundations, like history, like number amount of viewership, etc. But yeah. what's ironic is people won't invest into League of Legends like that because because they look at it and go, well, that's never going to be the biggest thing in the world, is it? So actually, the fact that Overwatch League is so risky and precarious is mainly the only reason all these people are plowing in, as far as I can tell, because you're just selling them that, like, the upside's so crazy, you know? Well, I, yeah, and I think, you know, to use the new millennial term, like, FOMO, the fear of missing out, does not exist with the LCS products no, or Riot no, no. products. The years, yeah. a few years ago, maybe, but then Riot stubbed their toes so many goddamn times, sure. right? Getting that really up and running and, and monetizing it with their initial sponsors. So fear of missing out is very much this Overwatch thing, right? And like, and it, you can watch all the team owners. It's FOMO in every Battle Royale that drops. They all have Fortniters. They all have Apexers. Like, you have to, like, just keep grabbing because if you miss out, if you miss that wave... Um, and this one, I think, for this VC world and these sports guys is like, oh, you got to be on the Overwatch train. Like, what are you doing? And again, back to Kraft, right? This guy is their poster boy. He was in all their first interviews with his boy, Bobby. Uh, and so if that fan base doesn't think that he, like, isn't important to this project and this business in the sense of how it all got here, and he's just some distant owner of the fucking group that happens to just kind of own the uprising like your blinders have actually just closed your fucking hey, brain at this point dunk right? tell me what you think of this right we okay. believe the fourth largest revenue stream from overwatch will be ticket sales importantly we think teams and team owners will keep the bulk of these revenues 90 percent versus sponsorships and digital streaming rights which will be divided 50 percent in our base case here we go. <laughs> in our base case, we assume that the average event will host eight teams from Friday to Sunday in a mini tournament with average regular season attendance of eighteen thousand. That's the base case, remember, guys. That's not the be that's not the bull. That's not the best case scenario. That's the normal you what you can expect generally. We every week every weekend eighteen thousand people. Are I would just ask you this. I, <laughs> I, I would be very surprised. If there were even <laughs> 10 events in the history of esports that had 18,000 paying customers. Right. Then, the, yes. We, we, <laughs> estimate, we estimate this will represent 5% of the local fan base in the average city with an Overwatch team. Wait, wait, do the math. 5% times how many? 18,000? So, so it's 18,000 is 5% of their city fan base. Mate, they can barely get, the, they can barely get MLS to actually work in all the franchise cities, but they're going to get Overwatch to work in fucking you Wisconsin. Need to Finally. <laughs> legal needs to approve yeah, a story yeah. on this, man. <laughs> okay. Finally, um, finally, sorry, you have to say one more sentence, one more sentence. Finally, we arrive at our numbers by assuming the average ticket price will be $25. Get me out. Get me out. <laughs> Most what is the average ticket price? Oh, oh, oh. Wait, this is their fourth revenue generator, oh. too, by the way. So this yeah. is how high... 25 times 18,000. Somebody do math. Is <laughs> there is there something in there about, like, uh, did they pontificate on, like, uh, viewership numbers? Uh, let me... Let me... So that's 450, like, they did, it, they did attendance, but did weekend. they do online? Did yeah, they try me... to pontificate some sort of... Let me see. Which I'm, I'm sure they did. I'm All sure ownership... Did. All owl franchise owners will receive a robot that will suck their dick and clean their <laughs> room. So at that point, just go hog wild and start adding shit in there, you know? <laughs> you get three wishes. I know it's not full survival, is it? So just go wild. Okay, so but that's what Robert this Kraft tells you how. So this is, that's the public Lord face. Please. But behind the scenes, they are so scared of what 2020 is going to be. They scaled back the production so much this year, saying, holy shit, we can't afford to do this every week in a r and travel this many people. We need to start cutting people. And that's yeah, one of the big things why they started cutting 
a huge amount of the staff. Oh, saying, of course. We yeah. got to see how small we can make this Look show. The logistics map. Oh, it's it's okay. Here's the other story. We're, we're having a, a talk about it. They had like a team that was working on the 2020 thing, mm. and I was talking with them. I go, "Have you guys talked to Adam Apicella at all? He works for you guys." And they're like, <laughs> did they like who? cower away? Like, oh, no, they they said who? Like... And I said, you know, the person who's put on more esports events than anybody else in the entire fucking world works for us. He's in town this weekend. You guys should meet. I remember the and viewing I numbers. Did, I remember I the viewing numbers stuff did. not being that crazy. I remember actually they set very for the regular season they set very tempered expectations. I think in it was some mental mate, like twenty k. No, oh, but, I know yeah, that but some it was, of the owners the said playoffs that Ron were, saying they hope they got forty k. But I'm just wondering if Morgan Stanley did they do they have a TV yeah, number? So in let there me let me yeah let me let me see let me see. Because uh, yeah, Noah is famous for being on record saying they hope they would get forty or fifty watching and they'd be happy. I'm gonna go ahead and guess right. Like if it is in there, I this is my guess as to what their move would be because obviously there was no Overwatch like stats that you could use that would ever look good, even if you extrapolate them. So I will go ahead and guess that they try to point out like an equivalent esports game that like maybe like the League World's Finals or something. And they'll try and say that mm. you know like, as long as we just got a baseline of this kind of a number, then we would you know that I reckon that's the sort of uh, what would you describe yeah, gotta... as like the dodge mm. to get around it, you know. I gotta find my copy of this then, because it is it is a good laugh. This report. Oh, it sure is. So yeah, I think um, they said like uh, I do remember it showed up in the playoffs. That, that basically they were shooting for an average of about seventy two thousand viewers per game per regular season, which I think is very modest. Honestly, I think that's where I placed it. I said I think you will probably get about you'll come out about eighty thousand where the uh, with the size of esports yeah. is but then in the playoffs that's where they went mental and they were like now nah, we fully expect this to shoot up to 1.5 million or something it's like something just bonkers like that it's like what yeah yeah but i can't i can't remember and i can't find the bit so uh but yeah the yeah get with, get with your lawyers get that thing out there yeah it should be out there i'm amazed no one else has leaked it because it's, it's yeah me too actually by it, the it, way one of the guys from your chat has made i've retweeted it a meme where it is vince's face on big show yeah i already, already retweeted it exactly it. like him yeah that's unreal But yeah, on, honest, honestly, dude, like that fucking document is just a laugh a minute, dude. Oh. It, it, it is so, so good. I really... But I, when you read it and you take off like your logic and reason cap and you put on your I got millions of dollars and oh, I don't know shit, then you go, well, if I if I presume to believe Morgan Stanley's report, where mm -hmm. do I sign? Right? I'll tell like, you a little you story, know, Which is sad. Like, right? This story is a complete indictment of the scene that esports has created and where it's going. So I had some people... Uh, wanted to basically have me do a little bit of consulting and they just wanted to like you know throw some teams at me at csgo teams and say like you know what would happen if we were to buy this team what would ha what do you think of this team here if we were to pursue getting them you know if we got this team could we move it to a different region and rebrand it anywhere you know simple questions mm -hmm. and i told them right I'll, i'm just gonna i'm not gonna sugarcoat any of this i'll tell whatever you ask me i'll just tell you straight up like my opinion the same way i would if someone asked me in an interview or on a desk or something you know and what happened was as they were going through all these teams and a lot of these teams by the way weren't like complete nobodies a lot of them would have been ranked say like in the 15 to 30 range within global counter-strike every team they would ask me about even though they're the ones asking me as i would explain the context of like well actually you know this team is maybe like stuck at like 17th and you know unless they could unless you really are willing to pump in a lot of money and buy players they're probably not going to ever get into the top 10. as i would explain every sort of like tempering reason as to why you wouldn't go crazy first of all they would argue with me and say stuff like well no but that's is that true though thorin i mean on the gosu gamers ranking they are ranked seventh and i would say like first of all what don't interrupt me when i'm talking and i'm the expert like you don't know what the fuck a gosu gamers ranking is so don't bring up nonsense and no that is irrelevant you know and i'll give them the reasons and what's mad is every time i gave them what was actually incredibly valuable advice for these people so they don't raise a hundred million dollars and waste it they would almost be like annoyed that i was like harsh in their buzz as it were and at the end of the whole thing when i actually explained to them essentially the gist of what i said was like right team a you know is probably like 13th best if you move them a region and rebrand them you could maybe get them top 10. this other team over here is like pretty good but they're going to cost you a lot probably because of the buyouts and then this you know this third team's terrible i wouldn't go to them to whatsoever you're probably never going to get anywhere at the end the guy literally goes 
well, all the teams we've talked about, you've basically told us are terrible. So, I mean, I guess we shouldn't get any of them, right? And I was like, well, that's exactly not what I just said. Like, you have just... Compl- what you wanted me to tell you was go ahead, go fire yeah. all the bullets in the chamber and buy all these teams as much as possible and you're all going to be rich, isn't it? And they really did. That was literally what they wanted me to tell them in this call. Yeah, they, they just wanted you to confirm what they yeah. already wanted to do versus it's actually mad, isn't it? give you proper... Because I was thinking yeah. they were going to love the fact that I was, like, giving them the real, basically. Be the no, yes man for no, us. No yes one man. wants that. People don't want advice. They want validation for what they're going to do anyway. That's pretty much the rule of thumb. <sighs> yeah, and, and I think that's what got you in a lot of trouble, Jason, because you and I even talked about that because I had done some work with Blizzard, and I, you and I are very blunt, very like, we need to get this done. This is what we need. I mean, We're not necessarily the nicest, sweetest humans when we have to do this stuff, especially in a stress of, like, show is king production mode. And when I did those few things, I was like, I don't want to work for these people anymore. They have a very different style for me and if you're gonna make me the director of your show and then literally so, so second there, guess everything but i told you like they're not gonna like you not being a yes man right eventually uh, and... <laughs> it, like when when we did the overwatch game at e-league i banned blizzard from the control room they weren't allowed it. yeah <laughs> because they were just outrageous as well yeah, yeah. yeah and they would every once in a while just stick their head in and say something and i'm like Boop, get out uh, but and, and thankfully i had uh trevor uh, Houston, who works at Blizzard, again, another good guy, one of the good guys at Blizzard, who, like, knew me, and so, like, he only came and told me Blizzard shit when he desperately had to, and he knew that once we were live, like, to stay the fuck out of my, and he, it was great, you Get know, so, but that's head. not, like, he's, he's probably the exception to that rule, right, I had a couple of other Blizzard guys that were the opposite, like, tap on the shoulder, tap on the shoulder, it's like, what are you, what are you doing right now, like, what are you, what are you doing, get out of here, Ugh. yeah, it's, anyway. It is very weird. I, I I definitely a problem because I would when somebody said something like, "Hey, we want to we want to do nothing but third person here, just to see what it looks like." I know what it looks like. It looks like shit. You you have a smart system that you put in in place, so we can't even manually control where the camera looks. So if anybody is at a higher elevation, the camera pans into the ground. Oh yeah, yeah. We want you to use that because we want to see what it looks like. But it, it looks, it looks really it, cinematic. But you hired me to tell you what shit looks like, and it looks like shit. Yeah, yeah. Forget about that. Uh, ah. I was, that was what was mad though, because it was like, I mean, Slicky did it. It's like, right. So you flown yeah. us to California because you've gone. Oh, we love the stuff you did at Face It. Can you show us how to do it here? And then all they did was just go, well, this is, this is terrible. Let's do it this way. And then eventually it got back to the way we did it was the way me and Sliggy originally uh, gave them when we very first got there. It was just like, why the fuck are we even here? You just don't listen. And because we didn't instantly agree, we were cunts. The, uh, oh, we, yeah. had, we had, we you had, know, all of like stage one was constantly them saying, we want this, we want that, we want this, we want that. And then finally it was like, hey, can we have a meeting and discuss this? Because, and there were like eight people in the room and every single one of them said they wanted to see something different. And I'm supposed to produce all eight different results at once. And I, I just like, I was like, that's it. I'm not doing it on, on stage like, two. Uh, Jason, I, you know, you're not much of a team player. Are yeah. you? Can't you just sort of like you just do what you're told? Well, I, I would just agree <laughs> and then not do it uh, most of the time. Or like they would send a message, they would send me a message and I would say, okay. And that was all I would say. Well, one, cause I'm in the middle of a fucking show. I don't have time to have a conversation with you. I have five minutes tops to go to the bathroom and get myself another drink before I do the next fucking show. I don't have time to have a 20 minute conversation with you on the philosophies of, of should I switch off this junk rat tire because you don't think it's going to hit. Can, guys, can we please stop showing Genji? It's a little bit too fast. I don't think people understand what's going on. What, Although what Genji kills every single person at that particular meta. Yeah. <laughs> it, but it was just like, well, Genji's just killed everyone. No, 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 no. Don't show it. Can you just go on the Lucio cam? We need to show more support from third person, of course. We need to have more of a diverse point of view on the game. You know, I mean, Genji, then, you know, isn't he from an ethno state? And then these fans go to <laughs> the various Christ. Reddits about that event and they bitch about the observing team of said event and the observers cannot really defend themselves and then blizzard never takes the 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 heat and saying oh yeah this is our directive we're asking them to show them this they think it's you guys all independently having to do this stupid shit and you can't go defend yourself anymore it's just uh...